How examiners grade essays seems like one of the best kept secrets in education. And that's a problem for two reasons. One, it wastes our time and leaves us guessing as to what they want from us. And two, no matter how hard we try and guess, we just don't seem to impress them enough to grab that first class grade. Well, in this video, I'm going to use my five years of experience as an Oxbridge supervisor to demystify these secrets and help you write the best essay possible. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. My name's Shane and I'm a doctor and neuroscience supervisor at Oxford University. And today I'm going to show you how Oxbridge examiners grade essays. Why? So that you can craft beautiful masterpieces that get you that first class mark, opening the door to the brightest and best future you deserve. What you're about to see is actually a sneak peek lesson that's part of a 30 lesson essay writing masterclass that I've been tirelessly working on for the past two years. The video course will teach you how to write the best essays for your applications, essay assignments and dissertations so you can realise your full potential. Let's now take a look at the mark scheme Cambridge University releases to help guide their examiners. We're going to start with the criteria for a first class essay and work ourselves down. And I'll highlight throughout the key differences between the different classes. Now this is a pretty long statement, so I'll analyse each point as we meet them. Work which is excellent both in the range and command of the material covered, and in the argument and analysis. This criteria is quite clear in saying that a first class essay needs to have a good balance between range and depth. So an essay that goes into lots of detail on just one relevant point may have enough detail but could lack the range to get a first class. And similarly, an essay that covers all relevant points but has very little development may lack the depth to gain a first class mark. So in your essays, make sure to have a good balance between depth and breadth. But as we'll see later on, examiners tend to weigh range more and expect a minimum of at least all major points to be mentioned. The optimal way to secure a first I've found is to mention at least all the relevant points to a medium level of depth and then choose two to three points and develop them further and to critically analyse evidence throughout. And the next point will explain why. Work that is excellent in its understanding of the subject, that has engaged closely with the question, that has shown some originality and treated the evidence critically, that brings in relevant material from an appropriate range of sources and that is well planned and complete. This criteria covers quite a lot, so let's break it down. Engage closely with the question. This refers to making sure that the essay is focused and answers the question asked. Dissecting the question into its components will help you achieve this criteria, but more on question dissection later. The next point, shown some originality. This refers to the expectation of making unique and original points that haven't been mentioned in the lecture notes. We'll come to see later on how we can carry out efficient focused research to achieve this criteria without becoming a world leading expert in the field. But for now let's bear the importance of this in mind. The next point, treated evidence critically. Analyzing the quality of the evidence, the study methodology and biases are an important part of a first class essay. So it's quite fair for the examiners to expect this. Next point, that brings in relevant material from appropriate range of sources. This means that examiners expect to see information and evidence not explicitly taught, i.e. from wider reading. Ultimately, they want to see a demonstration of independent learning and wider reading that demonstrates a deeper level of understanding. The next point in what makes a first class according to the mark scheme. A first class mark may be awarded on more than one set of criteria. There may be a great deal of relevant information displaying substantial knowledge and understanding. The arguments and presentation may be stylish. The approach may be original, critical or unorthodox. This statement essentially explains there's more than one way to skin a cat. A weird saying, but you get the point. Examiners award first class marks based on the volume of information included, depth of understanding shown, unique style, critical analysis, and originality. And you don't necessarily have to do all of this to get a first class mark. You can focus on hitting just one or two of these criteria to secure yourself a first. This is probably the smartest way to do it without taxing yourself too much. Let's now look at the criteria for a 2-1 and see how it differs from a first. So the criteria for a 2-1 reads, work that shows a good broad based knowledge of the topic and the lecture material that is presented in an organized way and clearly argued and focused on the set question. So similar to the expectation of a first class, it's really important to have a good organizational structure 
and have an essay that's clearly focused and answers the essay question. But compared to the criteria for a first, the wording suggests that the breadth and depth expected is slightly less. Going on, the 2-1 criteria expects. Answers at the top end of this class would often include material from outside the taught material and where relevant, from different lecture courses and would include some attempt to treat the evidence critically and to synthesize arguments. Answers at the lower end of this class would be competent, accurate in reproducing lecture material and show evidence of reading of the principal sources of published work on the subject. So similar to the first class, there's some expectation for you to go beyond the lecture material and carry out independent learning, especially for the top end of 2-1. But different to the first, this expectation is certainly less, and especially the expectation for critical analysis is far less. So in summary, the three biggest differences between a first class and a 2-1 are as follows. Critical analysis, original points, and evidence of wider reading beyond the lectures. So your time is best spent hitting these criteria to help you move from 2-1 to a first. Let's now look at the criteria for a 2-2 essay. Work that overall shows a reasonable competence in the understanding and presentation of the relevant material. So in comparison to a first and 2-1, the expectation of the breadth and depth of knowledge is now far less. Answers at the top end of this class would show competent understanding of the basic lecture material or reasonable organization and focus. An answer at the low end would show gaps in understanding and coverage together with poor organisation and focus. This statement is very clear in setting out a lower expectation for understanding, structure and focus. Unfortunately, essays written without question dissection or planning fall in this camp. This is why it's so important to spend some time dissecting the question to make sure you have it clear in your head and also committing some time to planning your points so that you have a good organisational structure. But don't fret, throughout this course we're going to be covering how to do all of this. The next criteria for 2-2 reads, certain types of uneven work would fall into this class. Detailed, factually correct work that did not relate to a broad knowledge of the topic to the specific question asked or work with clear organisation and some insight but with serious omission of factual knowledge. This criteria essentially says that a 2-2 essay may not say something obviously wrong but it may miss out some important points. So it's quite clear from this that for the top essays, examiners tend to prefer a good range that covers a variety of different points. This is a careful line to tread however. As I mentioned before, the optimal way to get a first I found is to mention all the relevant points at least to a medium level of depth. Then pick two or three points and develop them further into a greater level of detail and depth, whilst also critically analysing evidence throughout. Finally, let's go through the criteria for a third, mainly to help us realise what to avoid. At the upper end of the class, work that just shows competent knowledge of the basic core material. At the lower end of the class, work that shows some knowledge of the material, but with serious deficiencies in understanding, coverage and organisation. This will include work that is unduly brief or largely misses the point of the question. This statement makes it very clear that there are three fundamental components that cause essays to fall below their full potential. Breadth and depth of knowledge, organisational structure and clear question focus. So remember to optimise your chances of success by focusing on these three components. And to help with that, in the next lesson we're going to see how to dissect a question so that our essays remain clearly focused and answers the question directly. And if you're interested in that lesson, as well as the rest of the Essay Writing Masterclass, then you might like to sign up using the link below. That way, you'll be the first to hear when the video course goes live. In the meantime, to find out more about how to write the best essays, you might like to check out this playlist. But that's it from me for today. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you again in the next video.